Good evening. This is CTV News for Wednesday, June 13th. I'm Patricia Vallone. Thank you for joining us. Well, it's no secret that the county has gotten a bad rap when it comes to ed its education system. But today, the county executive made a big announcement that he's hoping will turn that around and push it in a better direction. Denise Douglas is joining us with more. Yeah, very big announcement, Patty. Mm -hmm. He has put together a 12-member commission. You know, the county executive, as he sees it, growth in the area is tied to education, meaning parents move here for a good educational system, businesses, and so forth and so on. And this is ultimately all tied to making Prince George's County a whole lot better. We've seen County Executive Rashern Baker visiting schools as he promised to do when he took office. Now he wants to do more to push education forward. I'm committed to reversing the perception that our school system in Prince George's County is subpar. It is not true. Baker announced that he has that formed a commission to advise him on what can be done to improve Prince George's schools. It's being chaired by Sagoon Eubanks, a veteran in the education field, who will collaborate with other educators, parents, and business leaders to get the job done. It just gives me, as, as a resident and as a voter, so much pride and honor knowing that I have my elected officials who share the deep values that I have about quality education. They will develop recommendations, strategies for public outreach and image improvement. School Superintendent Dr. William Height says their input is important. There is a need for more broader assistance and more broader support and more broader involvement with our community. And I think that with his work and with his voice, he can help us kind of generate um, that activity. I am confident that this approach will improve student achievement in areas in the county that need it the most. With the commission in place, Baker puts forth an ambitious goal to make the school system one that everyone can take pride in by the end of his term in 2014. I want us to be known in the state as the system, school system that moved the most, the quickest, any place in this state. That's right. Now, the commission expects to meet sometime this summer. I haven't set a date quite yet, but thinking sometime in July. Once they are off and rolling, they will produce a quarterly report as well as a yearly report, which we hand it over to Mr. Baker. All right. Well, thank you, Denise. Okay. Well, political consultant Julius Henson is sentenced to 60 days in jail for his part in a scheme to allegedly suppress black votes in the 2010 election. Henson was convicted last month of conspiracy to withhold an authority line from a robocall made on behalf of former Governor Robert Ehrlich's campaign. The call went out to 112,000 homes in Baltimore and Prince George's County, urging voters to stay home because their candidate had already won. Ehrlich's campaign manager Paul Shurek was convicted of four counts in the same scheme, scheme including election fraud, but he received no jail time. Well, more reaction tonight to the Tiffany Austin conviction. The delegate from the 24th District was found guilty yesterday of theft and misconduct after using General Assembly funds to pay a staffer at her law firm. The lawmaker who held the seat before Austin expressed her disappointment in the case. I'm just really hopeful that things will somehow work out and we can move forward. You know, what needs to happen in the 24th Legislative District is larger than all of us. And needless to say, we do need people on board who are competent, who are qualified, who have integrity, uh, who don't come with baggage. Because, as you know, the, the needs inside uh, the 24th District, as well as Prince George's County, are great. And we just cannot afford to have any negative press. But hopefully this will pass over and we can move forward. And Austin's attorney says she has no plans to step down. She's facing another trial in October on related charges. Well, two years ago, the Council of Governments adopted a plan called Region Forward to help create a more accessible, sustainable, and prosperous future. This afternoon, the plan's first progress report was presented, featuring a wide range of goals. The plan made up by the member jurisdictions of the Council of Governments. So it's you know, Washington, D.C. and all the suburban um, jurisdictions uh, to try to um, implement a plan that will um, enhance livability, um, look forward to the next 40 plus years um, and how we will grow in a sustained way, sustainable way and, um, 
and that we're all working together toward common goals. The plan includes 28 targets, seven of those considered major challenges for the region. So we have a number of uh, key challenges, and those range from transportation, uh, sort of the infrastructure, the actual maintenance, uh, so that we make sure our metro system is reliable, um, roads, bridges, other things like that. And so today the COG board um, uh, basically approved the, the plan that we have come up with. Now we have to work on implementation of that plan. And the data will be used as a baseline for future reports. A house fire in Hyattsville remains under investigation. The incident happened about 9.45 this morning in the 4,000 block of Madison Street. It began on the first floor and quickly spread to the second story. One firefighter received a minor injury. He was treated and released. Fire officials say all of the occupants will be displaced. Well, it looks like Maryland voters will have the final say over whether or not undocumented immigrants will get college tuition breaks. In a ruling issued today, the Court of Appeals agreed to allow the referendum to appear on the November ballot. The DREAM Act permits qualified undocumented students to receive in-state tuition at public colleges and universities. Opponents led a petition drive to put the issue on the ballot, gathering more than 100,000 signatures. Advocacy group Casa de Maryland fought against it, arguing that the law is actually a spending bill and therefore exempt from voter referendums. And you are watching CTV News. I'm Patricia Vallone.